So I'm Catherine, and I'll be talking about the pesticides that are under the regulatory part of the LBAM project. But before I get started, I need to speak about orthene. I didn't realize I'd be speaking about orthene, but a lot of people are using orthene inappropriately because of the way the label is written. Orthene is quite restricted, actually, because on the label, they have a category for containerized nursery stock, and there's only six crops listed on containerized nursery stock, like arborite, arborvitae, rhododendron, azalea, I think camellia, and roses are on there, and there's some kind of a U that's on there as well. On the category that says ornamental trees and shrubs, unfortunately, that means landscape ornamental trees and shrubs because they were so specific to put in a category for containerized nursery stock. So that really limits your options as far as what you can use orthene on. Same way with your flower crops. The way they wrote the label, they have flowering crops, field-grown flower crops, but then they just limit it. There's very few actual crops that you can use with orthene. Okay, so you just need to be aware of that. Catherine? Yes. Um, that label is like identical to the orthene label. It's just like they copied the orthene label. I was hoping they had written it differently. And the thing about the orthene label, the registrant was contacted to tell them about the problems of this product. And they were not aware of the impact of indenting things and putting things in parentheses that limit the use. And they do not have any plans at all to change the label because they don't make any money off of this product for horticulture, so there's no interest in changing the label. Any other comments on orthene? <laughs> okay. All right, we're gonna be talking about, you know, some of these pesticides, they're not California restricted, but they may be federally restricted. So I'll just go over how you would know the difference. Uh, talking about getting a private applicator certificate if necessary to be able to use some of these products. I'll go over some basic label requirements you need to be aware of when you're looking at labels. Uh, what's, what is on the label? And please, read the label. You'd be surprised how many people do not read the entire label, or even three quarters of the label. Okay, this scimitar is on the list that you can use. And this particular pesticide is federally restricted because it has, see on the top, it has this box that says federal, uh, that says restricted use pesticide. They call that the federal shield. So anything that's in this little box and says restricted use pesticide, it's federally restricted. So what does that mean to you? Well, you need to have your op ID number, of course. But in order to use this, a person has to have a certain qualification. You either have to have your private applicator certificate or a qualified applicator license or a qualified applicator certificate. So where do you get the certificate? Now the, the um, qualified applicator license and certificate, those are state licenses, so you get those through the state. But the private applicator certificate, or PAC, is given through the county, and it's good for the entire state of California. So if you get one in this county, you can use it in any other county. We have people that work in different counties, and so it's not a problem for them. But we do give the exam at our San Diego office at the address I have listed up here on Fridays at 10 o'clock, and you really need to call and make an appointment to make sure that they have room for you. And it's free, okay? Um, I have the phone number there for you if you need to call to make an appointment. And a lot of people are confused about the card. They go, well, my card was only good for six months or one year. What the state does is they take the entire alphabet, they divide it in thirds, and they renew one third part of the alphabet each year. So depending where they are in the cycle, your card could either be good for one year, two years, or three years. But then the next go around when you renew it, it will be good for the full three years. And the other thing is with this, you are able to use the federally restricted materials, and also this enables you to be able to get a California restricted material uh, with the permit that we issue, and those are good for a calendar year, from January through December of each calendar year. Okay, I put these two side by side because they both have the same active ingredient. They're both using spinosad A and D, 
And you really need to le uh, read the label on here because for the conserve, it says you cannot use it more than three consecutive times and that you have to alternate different modes of chemical classes so that you don't have an overlap that they're working in the same manner. Whereas in trust has the same active ingredient, but you can't use it more than two times in a row. And then you have to uh, use other chemicals within a different class, different mode of action. The other thing is to remember on these products, they are toxic to bees, and they even have on the label, it will be toxic for three hours following the application of either one of these products. So on all of these labels that I was reading, they all pretty much either are toxic to bees or aquatic wildlife or fish or invertebrate aquatic organisms. So you have to be very careful with mix loading, how you're going to dispose of any wastewater to make sure you don't have anything going into any creek that would impact any aquatic life. And this first one, uh, scimitar, I meant, uh, I meant to mention that that one is toxic to fish as well, so you have to be careful. Okay, so what, what is on the label? Why, you know, I just want to use it on my plants. Why do I have to read the whole thing? So first of all, you have to make sure you're actually using the correct product because on the list that they have from CDFA, there are different formulations of the same active ingredient chemical. They just, you know, maybe one's a granular, maybe one's a water-soluble packet. But you have to make sure you get the correct one and that the EPA number on the product that you're using matches the EPA number that they have on the list of approved products. Again, you need to find out what the environmental hazards are on these different products because so many of them are toxic to bees and aquatic organisms. Also, what kind of personal protective equipment do you need? Is there something special? For instance, if you use the Dipel product, you're required to use a respirator, either an N95, an R, or P, or you can use the organo cartridge respirator. And then, of course, that calls in a whole slew of different regulations on an employee being able to use a respirator. Some of these have restrictions as far as uh, how soon you can plant. They tell you the minimum time when you can do a second application with these different chemicals. So you really need to know what these restrictions are. And the other thing is, they, every single one of these labels tells you the maximum amount that you can use per acre in either a growing season or 12 month period, or they tell you how many applications you can make within the 12 month or growing season. All right, I wanted to um, speak to you about this one because this is on the list of approved products, but it is not for uh, production agriculture. It's a landscape product. Right there, application rates for ornamental plants, exterior uh, landscapes and interior plantscapes. And on the very last page of the label, in little print, under restrictions, it says, do not apply this product in commercial nurseries in greenhouses. Now, however, some of you may have landscape areas surrounding your nursery that may have the LBAM or you need to spray it. This would be a good product to use for you, but you could not spray it within the nursery itself on any of your commercial plants. All right, so if you have additional questions after you attend the whole seminar, you can call us at our office number that I have listed. Uh, if you know your area inspector, you can call that person. If you don't know the person, you can call that same general number. I'm the area inspector for Valley Center, Escondido, and Ramona at this point in time. And I know a lot of you because I've been your inspector in the past, and now I'm your inspector again. And so this is just a very short presentation just addressing the particular pesticides for the regulatory part. Does anybody have any questions about anything I've covered? Yes, David. Yes, what you have to do, you have to wait another week. You can't, you can't come back the very next Friday. You have to let a whole week pass, and then you can come back the second Friday after you did your first attempt. Good question. 
Anybody else have some questions? Yes. Now, um, part of the thing about the pesticide use reporting is we want to make sure that people are honestly reporting what they're using. And some people have made mistakes. And that's why you have to read your label. You have to know your product. And actually, it's very helpful because I may find somebody that's not in compliance because they used the wrong product because the same active ingredient is approved under a different label for that same use. And by going through the use reports, I was actually able to help the people so that they come into compliance. So as far as what you're saying, I don't believe there's any plan to do that. You just really, really, really have to read your label and really be familiar with your particular label. So you are on using the online use reporting? OK. That's one other thing I wanted to touch on. I don't know. How many of you are using the online use reporting now? Oh, okay. We still have a few people not. It's really wonderful. It's called the Cal Egg Permit System. It's a free program. You can go on there. It's available 24-7, and you report your pesticide use with the computer. It reports directly to our department as well as the state of California. And what's really nice, it archives all the information. It's to help you get away from having to have all these file cabinets full of pesticide use reports because you can just go into the computer and bring up your records and you can print out reports and you can select dates. I mean, you can do a lot of different things with the information that is in there. And our department, we're really happy to help you learn to use this program. Again, by calling the general number, we can get you started with your username and a password, your area inspector can help you out. You get a really great tutorial when you sign up. It's got lovely pictures with all kind of little arrows and numbers to guide you through it. And the program just keeps improving. They're constantly working on it to make it more user friendly. But there are little tips that if you speak to your area inspector, they can help you do these little shortcuts to save even more time for you. Well, 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 it's not a cost accounting report. Um, it doesn't keep track. I think you're referring to Agrian because Agrian would keep track of that. No? Yes. Right. And they will oftentimes use that as opposed to here. This is the workers know we've done this way. It's missing something. Oh, okay. What David's referring to is the application specific information for your field workers. And people like to use the pesticide use report. However, it doesn't have quite all the same information because on the application specific information, you have the date, the time, the area you sprayed, the name of the chemical, the EPA number, the active ingredient, and the REI. So you're not going to have the REI on the um, use report, and you don't know who sprayed it because that's not required as well. So if you want to use your use report, you can, but you're going to have to add that additional information onto that piece of paper. Uh, the other thing I tell people, you can either have actual labels next to this listing of your application-specific information. Using your use report, you can actually have a list typed up that has all the required information. And that way, it's just really easy to refer to that. And you don't have to keep rewriting the same information over and over again. That was a really good question. Thank you for reminding me. Do you have any other questions that would help out the growers? OK. Anybody else have any comments? OK.